How many people ready for the word? Let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm really excited about this sermon. Uh, if you will, turn with me to the book of Acts. We've been in the book of Acts since the 1st of September. We will be here a while, so uh, bookmark that chapter. Um, and uh, we've been continuing a sermon series entitled Empowered, uh, just becoming like the Church of Acts. And while you're turning to Acts, the 12th chapter, the 5th verse, the 7th and the 11th, I would like to say just a couple of things that you can hear me. These were what Brother Jonathan was talking about. We have some cards bundled for you. The ushers will make sure that you can have some uh, to help pass out to to talk about our fall family festival. Again, we are needing workers. Just give us an hour. It's not hard. If a kid wins, you give them a piece of candy. If they lose, you give them a piece of candy. It's pretty much a communistic way of government when it comes to candy. So please, it's not rocket science. As much as you could help out, we greatly appreciate that. Again, there will be prayer this Wednesday night. We had about 50 gather, powerful prayer time. We're gonna keep going as long as people wanna pray, uh, 6.30. And uh, again, we appreciate that. While you're turning, again, Acts chapter 12, the fifth chapter, the seventh through the 11th verse, uh, I would like to tell you your handouts are different. And you may have noticed your handouts are different. I, I've given you three bullets the last couple of weeks so you can write your own notes out. There's a couple of times I just feel like the Holy Spirit's flowing and I like to flow with the Holy Spirit. And the problem is, is often I get so worried about the next blank and if I'm gonna miss it that I can't really flow. So I wanna give you the big parts. If something hits you, write it down. Uh, again, I hope you use those. If not, I mean, I understand, but again, we appreciate that. And I want you to tap your neighbor and I want you to say, neighbor, say it loud. It makes me feel like you're alive. Amen. Neighbor, you do not want to miss next Sunday. Okay, I want everybody to hear me. Very, very rarely does a sermon come across my desk that changes me. Uh, that just, I mean, changes. It does, not just influence. It changes. It is, it, I, I'm not going to lie, it has had, since I've been studying and put it together, uh, started a couple weeks ago, uh, wrote it Friday night, came, uh, Friday just came and just felt some things going. It has changed the way that I pray. And I want everybody here next Sunday, hear me, please hear my heart. I don't do this often. I want you here, unless you had an arm chopped off or you're contagious, um, uh, a toe, you can make it. Be here, it has changed. And I, I believe it's going to help some people. Uh, let's look at the word of the Lord, Acts chapter 12. We're going to look at the fifth verse through the seventh. And then for time, we're gonna to skip to the 11th. Amen. If you're there, will you please say amen? Let's look at what the word of the Lord says. It says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was, was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door uh, were keeping the prison. L let's look real quick what the next thing says right here. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, said, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Let's look at verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself and realized, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. I want to talk to you on a thought that I'm so excited about, and I'm just believing Jesus' name. It's going to minister to some people in this house today. It's entitled, Why Not James? Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, why not James? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you today. Thank you. God, it's such a truly an honor and a privilege to preach your gospel. There are so many other people more eloquent, more powerful in speech, more educated to take this pulpit today. But I'm thankful, God, that you choose the ordinary men. And I am just pray today, help me, Father, to calm my zealousness. But God, Lord, to preach your word with passion. But most importantly, Father, help me to preach it with anointing. Encourage some hearts and touch some souls, and we give you glory for it. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you as you can be seated. Let me ask y'all a question, and I want you to, man, just, who loves this story? Let me, let, me, let me hear somebody. Let me see some hands. Is this not a great story? I mean, what's not to love about it? I know we've all heard sermons about it. It's, it's a powerful sermon. Think about this. King Herod 
Yes, another Herod, okay? Captures Peter and plans on killing him to win the favor of the Jews. Now, he says, I'm going to take him and I want to keep him and I want to hold him till Passover. And I'm going to kill him not because he's done something wrong and not because he's a criminal, just because it makes the Jewish people happy and they think I'm a pretty good king if I do that. Think about that. He, so he puts uh, Peter in prison, heavy chains on him. Then the Bible says he puts four squads of soldiers to guard him. But it goes over. It, goes, it, it, it actually takes it one step further. The Bible tells us that he takes his left hand and attaches it to a soldier, and the right hand attaches it to a soldier. I have to ask a question. It's not looking too good for the Apostle Peter, is it? I would say that that's about Fort Knox for that day. However, something happens, and don't we love it? God sends one angel to create a heavenly jailbreak. He, he sends one angel. The angel does something similar, I guess, to stopping time. And he goes and he gets Peter and he breaks him out of jail and he takes him right past the gate of the prison. Peter was a free man and we love the moment. Isn't it a great moment in Scripture where Peter knocks on the door to the very prayer group that's praying for his freedom. And they're so busy praying for Peter to show up that they just leave him standing at the front door. Man, isn't that how God is? How many people said, but I see that and isn't God awesome? That man could put together a perfect plan and God's just got to send somebody with no name to come and bail you out. Man, that's awesome. I love it. What an awesome moment. But see, I've heard so many sermons about this and all the awesomeness and all the jubilation and all the powerfulness of this scripture. In all the sermons that I heard, we overlook something and it changes the way I view this sermon. Something that we overlook often, and we read over these little passages of Scripture, but it's something we need to focus on, and that's Acts chapter 12, 2, verses 3. I want to show you this is the Scripture before our story starts with the Apostle Peter. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hands to harass someone from the church. Then, look at this, he killed James the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he then arrests Peter also. I want you to notice something, because this is something so important. I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. Two different people who were both in the inner circle of Jesus. We're not talking about they're, they're different, okay? Two people who are in the inner circle of Jesus who were completely different people, but yet they were very equal in God's eyes. Both of them were ahead of the church. Peter was the rock in which God was building the church. James was the pastor of the entire churches in Jerusalem. Everything was awesome. The same people, the same king, the same story. And yet Peter gets busted out of jail and James gets run through with the sword. Now, I want you to understand something. This wasn't something that Peter just happened to fall into some dumb luck, that things just went his way, some paperwork didn't get filed, that was a problem. Instead, hear me today. God sent an angel to break out Peter, and James was killed with the sword. So i got to ask, why does Peter get a heavenly get-out-of-jail-free card? But, Peter does, but James does not. Let me break it down simpler than that. Why not James? Why not James? What, I mean, it's one of those moments you've got to think about. Do you understand what I'm talking about? These were two of the three that Jesus always carried around him. We're talking about these are people that were close. And what happens is Peter gets a heavenly power miracle and James gets killed by the very same king. And so in my mind, I start thinking what it must be like to be John. Anybody ever had one of those James moments, those why James moments, where things just doesn't make sense? Why did that person get healed of cancer? But my loved one did not. God gave me this sermon. when We, some, we had three people get saved Sunday morning. We had church till 1 o'clock and sitting in this altar praying. God gave me this word. When I began to look at this board that was up with all these names that people have been praying for, 
and three came to Christ, and many more. Many more raised their hands. But listen, if you can't make a public declaration of your faith to Christ, I mean, I, to me, that's the basic building block of being a Christian. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm saying it's the... You're going to have to trust me. I don't want to waste my time just worried about what you're thinking. Okay, anyway, God hit me with this. Why do we pray for certain people? And certain people get saved, but certain people don't. Somebody's in this building today. You came to every prayer service, and you prayed for your loved one, and they're not here today. And we think about that. So why James? Does anybody have a James moment in their life? God, why did I lose my job being a faithful tither, and that person didn't? Why did I have a miscarriage, but that young lady over there in the next pew didn't? Why did I stand at that grave early, but Father, they didn't? Why James? Why didn't James get the same treatment as Peter? The same king, guys, arrested the two different people. And one God sent a powerful miracle to break him out of the same jail that James got killed in. And it's moments like these that the devil uses to get in our ear. And he hurts our faith. And he wants to hurt our worship. Because it didn't work out for me. I prayed. I fasted. I worshiped. And I believed. But it didn't work out for me like it did the person next to me. Why not James? Why not James? Why God? Why did they get away with it and I didn't? Why did they get out of it and it came to me? Why did I get struck with this disease when I've had faith and I've served you, but the person next to me didn't? I don't understand. And what happens is if we're not careful, the, the Apostle Johns of this world can look at this moment. What could have gone through his mind going, God, that don't make sense. That's my brother. Yes, Peter's my friend. But you let my brother die? God, he served you. He was there when you were pouring your heart out of Gethsemane. He was there with Jairus' daughter. He dies. And you send an angel to save Peter? You couldn't even send a messenger? You couldn't even move the heart of Herod? Anybody feel what I'm saying today? Anybody have ever had a Y James moment? When you poured your heart out and the devil says, see, the Bible don't work. See, God's not real. See, it's not. God doesn't care about you. Why do you worship when God's not just? God's not righteous. Hey, believer, why not James? And what the devil does, friend, hear me today, he wants to convince us because we found the sword that we don't have favor. Because we have found a difficult moment that God doesn't love us, that God doesn't care about us, that God cares about the Apostle Peter more than he does about the Apostle James. And somebody here today knows what I'm talking about. You put dirt on the grave you shouldn't have put on. You lost your job when you did nothing wrong and you were a tither of God. You've been living with an illness when all you've done is giving your best to God and the devil saying, see, you don't have the favor of God. But what I want to tell you is today, hear me. The sword has nothing to do with the favor of God. I want you to think about it like this. I was studying and I was thinking about this and saying, God, I don't understand. I came across 1 Corinthians 15. And 1 Corinthians tells me that after the resurrection, Jesus starts appearing to people. Did you know there's only one person he appears to twice in all of Scripture? Only one person mentioned in Scripture that I can find that he appeared to twice. Do you know who it is? Somebody shout it out. See, I find that to be favor. Brother Lowland, if Jesus didn't care about me, he wouldn't have took time to make sure he appeared to me twice. If Jesus didn't care about me, he wouldn't prepare me for the moment that I was about to face. If Jesus didn't care about me, you know what I call that? I call that favor, friend. He might have, yeah, Peter, he mentions, he mentions that he spoke to, but it says then he goes from speaking with Peter to the 11, which James is. But then one more time, he shows James. Can I tell you something? The sword and your pain has nothing to do with favor. That means when difficulty hits me, 
I'm still favored. When sickness hits my body, it can't remove the favor of God. When difficulty arises up against me and the devil says, where is God? I've still got the favor of God. When the sword cuts me and I'm bleeding, I still got his favor. When it doesn't work out in my favor and Herod's getting popular, it still can't remove the favor of God from my life. So let me talk to somebody in the unemployment line. Let me talk to somebody with a bad doctor's report. Let me talk to somebody in the battle of your life. Although the sword is the sword has shown up, it can't scare off the favor of God. But the favor of God will be with me even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's with me at the Red Sea when I'm locked in a lion's den. When I'm thrown like rubbish in a trash compactor, I'm telling you the favor of God is still on my life. The favor's there when my husband left me. The favor's there when my wife cheated on me because there's nothing that this devil or this world can put in my life that removes the favor of God from my being who's favored in spite I wish somebody right now just tell the devil I'm favored I'm favored you're cutting me up but I'm still favored James is weeping for his brother but he's still favored James is crying out but he's still favored let me tell you what the problem is with us get somebody nudge your neighbor and say neighbor get ready this is gonna be good Okay, here's the problem with us. We're short-sighted people. And that's why we got to always be careful of letting groups of people lead instead of the one voice of God giving the word because we're short-sighted people and we will sell out our future for the present. Hear me on this, James. Isn't that, Adam, I wasn't playing on this. Can I borrow you? Can I borrow you? It's okay if I borrow Adam. Adam, you're going to be the apostle James. I'm, I'm going to be Herod. Herod gets ready in me. Hey, crowd. Crowd's going nuts, cheering. I've got James, roughing James up, smacking James around. You don't do that. I'll, I'll have him whip you with the cat of nine tails. You do that again. <laughs> He's whipping him, beating him, roughing him up. They're going crazy when he has a soldier take out their sword and runs James through. Christians gasp, John in horror, although it would be magnified when Peter is set loose. But this is what we see, friend. Hear me today. You're here today. This is what you see. You see sickness stabbing you. You see heartache running you through. And that's all we get on, and that's all we focus on, is the moment of impact, the moment of pain. And so what we say as John and James is, God is not God. God hasn't rewarded me. God has punished me. God has hurt me. Are there any apostle James and Johns in the house that you've been run through by the enemy? And the problem is we're short-sighted and we can't get past the sword. But can I tell you, friend, that there was something going on even the moment they rubbed up before and even during they got James on stage. See, we get so busy, Brother Sims, focusing on what our enemy's doing that we never focus, Kelsey, on what God is doing. And while the enemy, help me, Jesus, was busy running the sword through, Jesus was busy riding. Now, you might say, what does that mean, Brother Donnie? The enemy wants to convince you that you don't have favor. But are you ready for this? While I'm getting hit with the sword, I don't get favor. But while Herod is running me through, Jesus was riding out. While he was not yet back off, while we were running through, while we were running through, Jesus was writing his name on the foundations of the new Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. Let me break it down for you. He took the name James and wrote it on the very building block of the new Jerusalem that you and I were going to live in. There's going to come a day, Russell, that I'm going to walk on by, and I say, well, there's James right there, buddy. While they were busy roughing up, Jesus was writing his name on his crown that he's going to receive. While he was busy running him through, Jesus was writing his name, read your book in Revelation, on the throne that he will have that will judge a tribe of Israel. 
So my question today, Christ way, in the moment of impact, will you focus on what Herod's doing or will you make up your mind to see what Jesus is doing? I want you to know that right now while there's an impact, Jesus is riding. Right now while it hurts and it seems like things are getting difficult, Jesus, you might say, Brother Donnie, I don't understand. Now let's look at some good things. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. It hurts, but can you know that right now Jesus is writing in the name, your name in the Lamb's book of life. You're confused because Jesus has is, is hurt you. But right now, he's welcome writing your name on the welcome mat to your heavenly mansion. Right now, it seems like you're down and out. You found the sword, but your crown is being engraved. And I want to tell you, they're writing your name on the placemat to the marriage supper of the lamb so what that's telling you while the devil's busy clanging his symbols saying look at me look what i've done can i tell you you get your eyes off what he's doing and understand the same god that's brought you up the mount moriah is the same god bringing a ram on the other side in the thicket i refuse to put my eyes on this country this devil the candidates but my god's still writing my god's writing my end and my god's writing my victory somebody give him praise The devil struck down my marriage, Brother Donnie, but God's still writing. He struck my body, but God's still writing. You've got to get your eyes where they belong, and that's on Jesus Christ. Somebody give God glory and honor in this house. Somebody say, he's writing. Somebody say it loud. He's writing. Isn't it good to know? I lost my job. He's still writing. My goodness, friend, we ought to be shouting the rooftop down because even when the sword finds me, I'm still a winner. You know who that is? That's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Any ever be Obi-Wan Kenobi's in the house? <laughs> Strike me down with all your hate. That's okay, devil. I'm still going to be A-OK. I still win. You still win. So let's look today at three things. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Just go back when that was my fault. Write that down. Maybe you found the sword, not because you did something wrong, but because you stand for something right. Understand? Okay. Now let's look at three things. Three things to remember when you lose your James. When you're the Apostle John and your James is laying dead, and yet God's doing a miracle in somebody else. Number one, these are powerful. I want you to please be with me today because I'm telling you, they really minister to me. Number one, somebody shout that out. Remember to keep listening. Now, here's what's interesting. I was sharing this with a fellow minister this week. And I was telling the basic, he asked me, I was preaching on it, asked the basic premise. You know what the first question he asked me is? It's probably what everybody else thought when I said this. Why not James? All right, why? You ready for the answer? If I take out your pen, I want you to write this down. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody does. There are certain things that's going to happen that you just got to trust God because he's God. F.F. F. Bruce called this moment when I was studying this. F.F. F. Bruce, a man of way yesteryears, said that this is a moment of divine providence. A mystery of divine providence. In other words, we don't understand why he chose one and not the other. We never will. But this is what I do know. We as Americans have a disadvantage compared to Christians across the world. Do you know why? Because we're democracy beings. We've been raised in democracy where if we don't like Bush, if we don't like Obama, if we don't like Trump or Hillary, we just bash them on Facebook. We don't understand what it's like to have a king, whether he's right or wrong, you better do what he says or he'll kill you. We don't know what it's like to live in a monarchy where you just do what the king says because he's the king. Way too busy, so it's been ingrained in us. But hear me when I tell you this, friends. Sometimes things are going to happen, and what we do is we allow the wise, because we're a democracy people, the wise rise up in us. And if we're not careful, we listen to the wise more than we listen to the voice of God. You know what I'm talking about? Why? I want to ask you a question just so I know I'm preaching to the right people. Anybody ever happen as a Christian believer, something happened that made you say, why? 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 What do I do when it happens, Alan? What do I do when it doesn't go the way I want it to? 
I'll tell you what I do. Keep listening. Yeah. Yeah. Things have happened to me. I can't give you an answer why they happen. We try to justify them as people as in a way to validate our trust in God. But sometimes things are going to happen. It just makes no sense. I was pastoring down. Let's talk about it. As Christians, we can't shun away from the issues. When I was a pastor, young pastor down in Baymanet, a pastor of a big Baptist church, his wife and three kids were killed in a car, a car accident. Why? We want to say why. When me and my wife had the a casket about the size of the top of that podium, and we would stand there, and people came and shook our hands. I heard the word why probably 15 million times. I don't know why. Why, why? And that's what we do. And the devil uses whys to get in our ears. Before we're not listening to God, we start going. But in that time, we've got to learn to tune out the whys. Start focusing on God. Start focusing on Him. And just keep listening. Let's talk about this about John. Okay, Listen to this. John serves God through the good and the bad. Did you know that John is the one that's the only disciple mentioned at the cross? And then Jesus does this to him. But when he says, why? Why was James arrested? He kept on listening. Why, Brother Donnie? Why? Why was James arrested? He kept on listening. Why, when we look up and then James is murdered? Why? But he kept on listening. He kept on listening, even though the apostle Peter came. He kept on listening when Jesus busted him out of jail. What did he do? He kept listening. Did you know he would form churches, but one by one, the other 11 were murdered. But what did he do? Come on, somebody help me. He kept listening. They take him and they arrest him for preaching the gospel, but he kept listening. They took him and he was sentenced to death, but he kept listening. They filled an arena to kill him as some kind of spectator sport, but he kept listening. And then they lowered him in a cauldron of oil like your french fries at Chick-fil-A, but it didn't kill him, but he kept listening. So then he comes up, and they look at him and said, I don't know what to do with you, so I'm sending you to the island of Patmos. And he's exiled away from everybody, but he keeps listening. And right there when he's working day in and day out on an island, heartbreak by himself with nobody but the twigs and a few lizards maybe to keep him company, he keeps listening. But I want you to see, friend, as he was sitting there, he could have got upset. He could have got hurt. He could have stopped when James was killed. He could have stopped, but he sat on Patmos, and he began to keep listening. He sat there day in and day out with nothing to do, but he kept listening. He began to work every day, the Bible says in Revelation, and he kept listening. But one day, while he was listening, one day when he didn't get heartbroke, one day when he didn't give up, One day when he kept listening, the Bible says he was praying and listening when all of a sudden. The Bible said that behind him, he heard a voice like a trumpet. Can I just tell you, friend, if he would have gave up when James was killed, we wouldn't have hope in today's election. If he would have gave up when things didn't go his way, we'd be sitting here going, what's going to happen next? We have no hope. But what did Paul say? Paul said, we don't have to live, Tim, like people with no hope. We don't have to worry about death because we know that there's going to come a day because somebody kept listening when it could be today and you're fighting through your grief and you're fighting through your problems when all of a sudden we're in here and we're worshiping God when the Bible says in Thessalonians, once again, we could hear a...
What I'm trying to tell somebody is keep listening. When the wise mount up, keep listening. When you're at their grave and your heart is broken, keep listening because there's going to come a time when you find out the voice of God still has something to say for your life. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't back up and don't back off. But keep going hard as you can to the goodness of God and watch him help you. Come on and give God glory and honor. Tracy, he would have missed the voice of God if he listened to the wise. Brent, he would have missed the greatest revelation ever given to man if he'd have let sorrow have the last word. But I want you to hear it like this, friend. We can never hear the facts of God as long as we're turning an ear to the questions of the devil. We will never, ever get the facts, the revelation of God, if we're worried about the wise of yesteryear. Can we give God glory and honor? Thank you, Brother Tim. Who got nervous when Brother Tim got up? Y'all thought he was coming to hit me with that trumpet. That's okay. That could have been the rapture just then. Were you ready? Amen. That's how things happen. Number two, not only do we keep listening, listening, remember to let it play out. Let it play out. See, you will never find a character in Scripture that is more polarizing than King Herod Agrippa. You know why? Because he was equally loved and hated. When studying about him, I found this out. He was absolutely loved and adored by the people, especially the Jewish people. He was despised amongst the Christians. There was no reason to see that even more than when he says, hey, I, I killed James to make the people happy. That looked pretty good. Let me do it to the Apostle Peter as well. We see that moment. Herod is the villain. Let me ask you a question. What do we do when it seems like the villain wins? John could have said, James is killed by Herod, the, 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 the enemy of the church, the despised one. I don't understand, God. Why does Herod get to win? Anybody in this building know what it's like that it just seems like Herod gets to win? Your circumstances got the upper hand. You're sitting there at the doctor's office because Herod's winning. You're in the unemployment line because Herod's winning. You're going to marriage counseling because it seems like Herod's winning. What do you do when you've been pushed around? I gotta go. When you've been pushed around and beat down because it seems like Herod's winning. Herod, what, can you understand what that must have been like for John? To say, God, why? Why Herod? You couldn't just let him, why does Herod get to win? Just, can somebody, anybody had to live with a Herod? I look at some of my friends, and I know you know what I'm talking about. I, I've been there with you. When it seems like Herod wins. You didn't do anything, right? You served God, and yet you were abused. You didn't do anything wrong, except you're still having to live through that. You're left trying to pick up the pieces. What do you do when Herod's laughing and you're hurting? I'm going to say that again. Somebody probably needs to write that down because that was in my notes, and I feel the Holy Ghost. What are you going to do when Herod's laughing and you're hurting? Cancer's laughing. The economy's laughing. The enemy's laughing. And you're sitting there, and you watch your child hurt, your business hurt, yourself hurt, and it seems like Herod's when You know what you do? You let it play out. And I began to study this. I've been saying, God, I hate that Herod wins. Anybody just hate that Herod wins? Be honest with you. I'm going to close in just a second. Don't worry with me. Anybody just be honest with me. Who hates that Herod wins? Takes a good man, Brother Keith, a good righteous man, and kills him. He gets to win. That ain't fair, is it? It's not fair. And so what we do as Christians, we say, God, I understand. But the answer will always be, let it play out. Can I share this with you? Isn't it awesome how the Word of God works that in the very same Scripture, we see Herod laughing, we see Herod dying. And when I begin to pray on this, God showed me something that encouraged my heart. The Bible says that Herod's up before the crowd and the crowd's going nuts. And they loved him so much. They begin to say, that's not the voice of man, that's the voice of God. And Herod goes, thank you, thank you, one of them. 
political fingers. I don't know who they're pointing to, but they're pointing to somebody out there. God gets mad because he takes the glory as a God. It almost comes across like he's just itching to do something to Herod. And the Bible says he sends an angel. And an angel strikes him with a death. And then Luke says, not only did he die, he got ate by worms. Now here's what I want to show you. Are you ready for this? Somebody say, oh yeah. Can somebody tell me what was the cause of his death? Someone would say taking the glory, and that's good. But why was he taking the glory? Because he was popular. Why was he popular? Go back to the very first part of Acts chapter 1 when he says he took James because he wanted to get the happiness of the people. And he got James and he killed James and he said, ooh, this got me popularity. Get me Peter as well. Can I just show you something? If he had left James alone, he probably would have never died. Sometimes you just got to let it play out. Sometimes it seems like they're getting away with it. Sometimes it seems like God's not sovereign. Sometimes it seems like God's not just. Sometimes you got to hear Herod laugh, but when you let it play out, you'll remember the scripture. Be sure that God is not mocked. What a man sows, so shall he reap. Sometimes you just got to wake up and say, God, I don't understand why. And God, yes, it does hurt, but I'm going to trust you and let you be God, and I'll be quiet. You do your thing, and I'll do mine. So before we goes this thing down, somebody needs to hear my voice. Just let it play out. Let it play out. But baby, my, but Brother Donnie, my baby's hurting in school. It ain't right. Just let it play out. Can I tell you, they might be picking on your kid right now, and your kid may turn out to be a Nobel Peace Prize winner because he went through adversity, and they're over here just barely be able to spell their name working at McDonald's. Come on, y'all. Don't act all pious on me. You feel me? Yes, sometimes Herod laughs. Yes, sometimes it seems like we go through adversity. Before I close, hear me. In the end, we always win. But knows this one thing. All things work together for those who are called of God. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Stand with me if you will, but I want you to hear what I'm about to say. Hear this, and I need you to write this down. What we do is, often we forget the enemy knows how it turns out. Who hears what I'm saying? I'm going through heartache now. Let it play out because the enemy knows how it turns out. You hearing me? The enemy knows how it turns out. So what we've got to learn to do is, we have to be able to tune out the one who is scared of how it turns turns out tune out the devil because he knows how it ends right now he's your Herod and he's laughing about your illness he's laughing about the problem in your family but before we go home can I encourage you real quick and just remind you that there's going to come a day where he puts on his water wings and he jumps in a lake of fire he knows how it turns out friend why do you think he's clambering now he knows how it turns out Brother Donnie, he cost me my job. He cost me my marriage. He cost me this. He knows how he turns out. Before we close with a third point, can you do me a favor as a church? When I point at you, and this might seem silly, it's okay. You don't have to participate. Those who will, when I point my hand at you, will everybody in this building just tell every devil, listen here, so they can go run back and tell Satan, you know how it turns out. And I want you to say it in your, your best way. Can we just say that? You know how it turns out. How many people that felt good? Can we do that one more time? You drug a devil in here fighting your marriage in your, in your mind. Somebody used why they were in the altar. Devil all in their mind, tell them to give up. Why? Because they lost James. Let's tell them they know how it turns out. Can you do that? You know how it turns out. You know how it turns out. The third, final, quick thing. Jane, John could have given up and asked why, but he didn't. He kept moving forward. I just need to tell this to somebody in the Holy Spirit. If he was constantly working on what happened behind here, he would have never heard the revelation that was waiting on him there. I just recently watched the movie The Martian. It's a cool movie if you haven't seen it. It's about a man who gets left on Mars, and he has to live in a habitat. 
But in a habitat, as far as with other science fiction, I want you to hear me because this is for somebody. There's what's called an airlock. You know what an airlock is? You step in the airlock with your spacesuit on. I'm in my spacesuit, you can tell. I don't walk that way for the record, just want that thrown out there. And you get here and behind you there's a door open that you walked in, but where you're trying to go is closed. You follow me? Well, how do I get where there was no life to the place where there is life? The door behind me closes and the door in front of me opens. It, it, it puts me in a place. If I took off my mask where the door was open behind me, Michael, I would die because the door's still open. My pain's still open. But when it closes, it sucks out all the bad and it opens the door in front of me and I'm in the place of life. And here's what I just want to tell somebody because you've been standing at the door for like ever. Where are you, God? God, why aren't you doing something? God, why? I don't understand. Here's what I want to tell you, and it's your last bullet point. God can never open the door in front of you. He can't open the next door till you close the door that's behind you. Anybody come out of some junk and some death and some heartache? Anybody come out of some abuse? Anybody come out of some addiction? Anybody come out of some failure? Anybody come out of some pain? Hear me, please. I know we're ready to go, and I promise you, I'm, I'm, you have my word as a minister. I'm being quiet with this next couple of statements. Hear me. God can never open the door in front of you until you make up your mind to close the one behind you. That's why Philippians 4 says it like this. The one thing I do is forget those things which are behind me. John would have never found what God had for him if he kept looking back. So I just feel the Holy Ghost right now. I just need to tell somebody, friend, close the door. Here, I feel the Holy Ghost coming up my body. I want somebody to hear me in the prophecy, okay? I want you to hear a word for the now. You will never enter in the life of God as long as you continue to look at the pain of your past. Somebody say, close the door. Somebody say, close the door. Can I tell you, I've been abused. I've been hurt. I've been, I don't want to get into all my garbage. I could go toe for toe for anybody in this building. I've been homeless. I've been through death. I've been through heartache. Do you know how I succeed in life now? Because I've closed the door. I, I, I don't know who that's for. I feel... I'm just saying, I've never done this. I feel the Holy Ghost. That's for somebody in this building. I just feel like I need to pray with somebody right now. I'm just saying, I feel the operating of the Spirit. Somebody's ready to be prayed for right now. I'm not going to embarrass you. If that's you and you know you just need to close the door, I'll come to you if you need to. Will somebody just stretch up your hand. Let me pray with you right now. A amen, amen. Can I just tell you right now in the name of Jesus? I, I just, I, that's why I want you to come on in the altar. If, if that's you, I see about three or four. I, I, I just feel the unction of the Holy Spirit. I got to lay some hands on some people right now that need to close that door. Come on in the altar. Come on. I just feel the operating of the power of the Holy Spirit right now. I got to close my door. I keep looking back, and God can't ever do ahead what he's trying to do in my life right now. Man, I just feel the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm just telling you right now, you haven't got out of the pain of yesteryears. And you want to know why you're stuck in the hallway? You want to know why you're stuck in the door? You want to know why you're not operating the way you're supposed to? Because you still got the airlock open, honey. It's time to close that door. Let God suck out everything that wanted to kill you. Everything that wanted to get you down. So you could take your mask off and be comfortable. But most importantly, you can walk in the glory that God has for you. Shut the door on that death. Shut the door on that hurt. Shut the door on that abuse. I'm going to pray with these. And I haven't got time to go on and on about an altar call. But there's some people here today that have been living with the James. You've been living with the past. You've been living with the heart, a heartache and the hard times. You're living currently right now with the difficulty. And you want to say, why not James, God? Why not James? When I pray with these, we're going to sing a song. I ask that you would come and the, somebody release the Holy Ghost in this house. I just feel the anointing right now. God brought you here today to hear this word. God brought you here today so you can hear. 
this is why. Just keep listening. Just keep preaching. Keep believing. I feel the whole. I wish somebody just start giving God glory and honor in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me some. Pray with these. I feel God speaking. Hear me, friend. Don't ask for life if you won't let go of death. Don't ask for blessings if you won't get past the cursings. Don't ask for victory if you can't shut the door on defeat. Hear me in the prophetic voice of God. You will never find my life until you let go of their death. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, in the mighty name of God, even before we lay our hands on these, I pray for those that's got to let go. This has been a season of heartache and of a, and a, and a pain, but it's time to let go. Hear me, friend. You're sitting in your chair right now because you will not let go of the pain of the past. Get in your airlock. Let it shut it out in the name of Jesus. Father God. Brother Keith, sing with us right now. Will you?